Good afternoon, everybody. I'm your host, Crystal, and this is another edition of the Nine O'Clock Meltdown podcast. And over speakerphone, I have the wonderful and talented Rob Nelson. Hello, sir. Hello, Crystal. Hello, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. (laughs) Of course. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to talk with me in the wider world about some new music that you've got coming out. Uh, You've already dropped a couple singles this year. I've been listening very intently, which we will hear after the interview. Uh, But you've got a new album that's dropping this month. Let's dive right in. Okay, well, the uh, the album is called uh, The Fountains of Paradise, and I want to issue a disclaimer to everybody, which I will probably do a couple more times <laughs> in the course of our talk, but The Fountains of Paradise is a novel by Arthur C. Clarke, whom most everybody will know from 2001 A Space Odyssey, but he was a very prolific and very talented writer, and I was reading The Fountains of Paradise, and I got to the end of the first chapter, and something happened at the end of the first chapter that was so surprising to me that I I sat up in my chair, and I said, that's it. That's exactly what what he did with this book is what I do with my writing of music, and it's a mixture of primitive and ultra-modern, and he put those together in that one crystallizing moment in the book, and I said, I don't know what's going to happen in the rest of this book, but I'm writing an album about it, mm-hmm. and that's that's what I did. So it's it's six songs, so it's, not, it's somewhere in between an album and an EP. It's 27, 28 minutes long and around there, but I wound up finding six touchstones in the book that for me told the story musically and that's what it's based on fabulous that's very cool that you can take something that's written uh, quite a while ago and kind of put your own spin on it and breathe different life into it um i read a quote one time that said good art is not borrowed it's stolen (laughs) and i pride myself that i steal only from the best Uh, Yes, exactly. Only from the best. (laughs) That's fabulous. Rob, are you still recording at your home studio? Yeah, I'm still recording at home. Uh, The the one biggest difference that uh, I I know you heard in this album as opposed to my works going back years, and uh, for anyone who's not familiar, Crystal is the one who more or less discovered me um, about a dozen years ago, and um, biggest difference here is that I've been incorporating a synthesizer. I don't want people to go running away thinking, oh, it's all electronic music. That's definitely part of it, but incorporating the synthesizer into existing structures with known instruments and some unknown, some instruments that you don't hear very much. And that's the thing that I've incorporated into my home studio. It's remarkably versatile, and I got it because I I was getting frustrated because I had all of these sounds in my head, and, and not just sounds like that you would play on a synthesizer, but you can also do rhythms with it. And I, I was hearing those in my head, and I had no way to record them, so I had to go out and get this. And it, I've, it's just been a source of joy for me. And you're going to hear that throughout this whole album. But the arrangements are still quite varied. Uh, as I said, there will be some things that will be familiar. but that, And you'll also hear some horns and some woodwinds and uh, a fair amount of tune percussion, like vibraphone and... Uh, marimba. That, that's what I grew up playing. I started as a drummer and percussionist. But all of these things are incorporated to make a story. And each one of these six pieces is a story in and of itself. And you don't have to have read the book, certainly, to enjoy these. They, each one stands on its own. You don't even have to have heard of Arthur C. Clarke to enjoy these. Mm-hmm. But I thought it was his storytelling is so great and it's so moving and it's not just science fiction it's a lot of human endeavor human emotion and tragedy and triumph are all in this story and it was those feelings 
that were coming out as I was writing it. So it wasn't just uh, the backdrop of the science fiction, it was the real human struggles and human emotions in it. Mm -hmm. And I do believe that you hear that as as you go through each song, because they do go through many changes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Rob, your music writing is so lush, and it's got so much depth to it. I would not doubt that uh, this paints a, a beautiful story, and I'm excited to hear the album in full. Like I said, you had dropped a couple singles that are out on iTunes and Amazon and, and on your Bandcamp page as well, so if people want to hear what this album has to offer, they totally can. What kind of date are you aiming to release the album in full? Uh, this will be February 23rd is when it's it's all coming out. It'll be on Laga Songs. It's L-A-G-A Songs uh, dot com. I do have up on the top of the site there are links to uh, the most popular download streaming services. Like you said, iTunes, Amazon, but it, it goes out everywhere. Mm-hmm. And uh, really any platform you use uh, you'll be able to find it. Perfect, perfect. And now it's been a little bit since last we talked and since last you put out an album. Uh, what have you been doing in that time? Have you just kind of been squirreling away working on music or kind of letting life happen a little bit or maybe a mixture <laughs> of both? Uh, well, you know what, outside of work, music really is my life. So I, yes, I've been writing furiously and it has been a few years since we've spoken, and in about that time, just before the last time we spoke, is when I got this synthesizer. So it's it's just opened up a whole new world to me. Mm-hmm. So what I've been doing is releasing singles, and right now there are ten or eleven that are available on my site, and they're they're available everywhere. And I've really been redoing how I distribute music and how I promote it because I had been on, on uh, it's called the Google Artist Hub, mm. and I was using that to distribute music to all the different services, and that magically went away. Mm. And so I had to I had to redo it all from the beginning. And I mean, no music was lost, but. There was just, it just wasn't available anywhere. So I started thinking, well, maybe I'll use this as a fresh start. I'll, I'll rethink how I'm doing it. And I decided to do singles just so I could see how people reacted to individual ones without getting an album. And then I, I just get so busy writing and then I think, oh yeah, maybe I should put out another single. <laughs> I, I just keep going and going and going, mm-hmm. but then once I once I came across uh, the Fountains of Paradise, I thought now is the now is the time to put out another album because I do enjoy doing albums, and they're not just collections of songs for me. There's going to be some connecting feature in them, mm-hmm. and this one it's it's uh, a lot more obvious than in other ones. Mm-hmm. But as you were saying too, my arrangements are very lush and they're they're very involved. Uh, but I don't want to scare people away on the basis of that. Uh, there's a old saying about like, writing stories and writing books is that the easier it is to read, the harder it was to write. Mm. And I believe that that's true in music too, because my my compositions and arrangements are very complex and there's a lot going on in the mix and I think you've heard with this new one there's a lot more going on even than in my earlier releases Mm -hmm. but they're never difficult to listen to Uh, the result is what I I think is that there's there's not an uninteresting moment in there there is always interest going on and so you're never overwhelmed, but you're just pulled along by the tide of each story. Mm-hmm. And in order to do that, there do need to be a lot of different elements. It doesn't have to be every instrument going all at one time, but 
but it's the way they're put together and it's the way not just on top of each other in the mix but how they're done sequentially and the tr how do the transitions work are they smooth from one section to another or sometimes they they might be a little bit jarring but that's just for dramatic effect nothing that's gratuitous so there is a great deal going on but mm -hmm. It really is an interesting, not a difficult listen. And that's the that's really the balance to put in as much as I can to make it as rich and as inter interesting as I can, but to never overwhelm, but always interest people. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things I've always enjoyed about your music, Rob, is I'll, I'll listen to it initially and it, it pulls you along. It's this beautiful like landscape story. It's very lush. And then once you listen to it again, so many more things open up. The the second listen, the third listen, the fourth listen. And every single time I listen to a song again, um, like Vampire Hunter, just something more comes out. Uh, and it's absolutely phenomenal that, I mean, hats off to you that you can write that way and that you can compose that way. Um, it's absolutely beautiful. All, all your songs are beautiful like landscapes and all this lush greenery going on but the, there's depth like you've got mountains in the foreground and then but then some wildflowers maybe a little bunny um, just absolutely beautiful. It's like going out to Yellowstone <laughs> in your mind every time. Oh thank you. That, that is another thing that um, I really do, not only do I work very hard to do that, but I think that's a, that's a difference between instrumental music and songs that mm -hmm. have like a, a verse and a verse and a chorus. For me, at least as a listener, instrumental music stands up to repeated listenings far better because if it's put together well, and put together thoughtfully and always working to get interesting little elements that you're, as you say, you're not gonna hear the first time, maybe even the second or third time, and you come back to it a while later and you think, holy smokes, I didn't know that was in there. <laughs> How did I not hear that before? Mm -hmm. And that's that's really part of, the, part of the interest. And plus, since there aren't any lyrics, uh, the story can be your own. Mm. And it can be different from one mood to the next, from one year to the next. And so even though this album is based on the Fountains of Paradise, it can relate to something completely different in your own life. And I think that that's really the the power of instrumental music. I mean, that said, there's, there's such great power in the human voice and it connects, but there's there's great power in instrumental music and it it really really is lasting and now rob i've had you on the program multiple times throughout the years and i've loved kind of seeing the progression of your music and you know there's a couple songs that are maybe more heavy hitting in the rock realm there are some that are a little bit more classical uh, what can we kind of expect on this album is it a little bit more avant-garde in the way that you approach this album compared to others what what can we expect oh well that that's a good question uh, there's there's definitely uh, some rock elements in it um, especially in uh, well, the first and the last songs. Uh, the first one is uh, Sunrise Over Srikanda, and the last one is The Tower of Kalidasa. And uh, I don't know if those names are gonna throw people off, but <laughs> 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 but they're, they are taken directly from the book. And those two have uh, middle sections where my friend uh, Mike Milankovic plays lead guitar on. And you'll hear some, it, there, there's definitely a, a rock basis in there. And that's where Mike and I both come from, is, a, is rock and roll. But there's, um, there's some that, I would say that there are some things that are more avant-garde in here. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say that there's like a, there's certainly not an entire song that you would say avant-garde, like it's the, 
Talking Heads circa 1980 or something like that. <laughs> but there will be some avant-garde elements in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's even some more uh, traditional elements. Like there's uh, one song, Gallery of the Princesses, uh, starts off almost, it, it's almost like a swing song. Mm. But then where it goes from there, though, is something very different. And that's where I, I think possibly the the difference between this one and a lot of other releases I've done is that there's a bit of a story already in existence when I started writing it, even though uh, there aren't many places where there's specific elements of a story, uh, like there are in, there is one in Sunrise over Srikanda. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's one in the uh, the Fountains of Paradise, the title cut, where you will say, well, yeah, definitely that's part of that story. But since these stories were already written, there was, there was a, I had a real narrative quality in mind. Mm-hmm. So they, they move along with, with the exception of the first and last songs. They really go from one place to the next to the next, and they don't return to the place where they started. So mm-hmm. it's, mm-hmm. it's kind of like a mini symphony in the way that they're put together and that there are these different movements, although usually in the symphony you're going to reprise the, uh, the theme that you had in your opening theme. You're going to reprise it in a, in a coda or, or an ending section, which I, I did do in uh, Sunrise of Rishrikanda and the Tower of Kalidasa. Mm-hmm. But the other ones, they definitely have a, a linear narrative to them. And I do listen to quite a lot of classical music, which really shocks a lot of people because they wouldn't think that somebody who uses as much of electronics as I do. But there's no difference to me. I mean, music is music, and I like the structures that I learn from in classical music and also certain techniques of how you can repeat a theme but have a do it in a very different uh, arrangement Mm -hmm. or repeat a a compositional theme maybe throughout the piece or here, here, and here throughout the piece and maybe even disguise it so you won't really know it unless you're listening for it. And uh, so I, I really have kept the same ideas of having some grounding in rock and roll and also uh, what I learned well, way back in school in jazz and swing. Mm-hmm. I've in, incorporated those, but I've, I've added a lot more that I've been waiting years to add that I can do now with this synthesizer, bring more of it to life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I've incorporated all of that with this, this structure of classical music. And I, I think that the story, storytelling is cohesive and oftentimes exciting. Yes, I completely attest to that. I, I think all your albums are exciting in in their own way just kind of the the progression like i said earlier of your different albums from from the very start when i was at kuws and you popped in one day and we sat down and had a conversation (laughs) about (laughs) what you were doing at the time and then lo and behold you were on the radio show oh goodness that was now what 12 13 years ago and and you've been on ever since um, and and all your albums have this this amazing cohesiveness and this amazing story behind it. And you're right; you don't use a lot of lyrics in your songwriting. I think maybe you have maybe two or three that I've heard that have a couple lyrics in there. Maybe a little poetry, but it's mostly spoken and uh, brought forth through instrumentals and layering, which is amazing, which I think is kind of a lost art form in itself, almost. Um, A lot of people I'm finding are not necessarily obsessed, but driven by the lyrics of a song, which can be extremely powerful, do not get me wrong. Poetry is extremely powerful as well, um, but something should be said for letting the instruments speak for you. Yeah, it it really does. And 
when when I first started songwriting, I I did well a lot of songs, and I I had a lot that had that first chorus, first chorus, bridge break, first chorus, because it was it was familiar, and you know, I grew up listening to classic rock, but then I also heard um, Emerson Lake and Palmer, which are still my biggest influence, and they did uh, such a mixture of lyrics and instrumental, and they introduced me to classical music as well. And so as I, as I started writing more and more music, and I got more comfortable at it and better at it, I was gradually moving away from those basic st- song structures to things that were more complex and much more interesting. So it was never a conscious thing. But I can look back now and realize this is what I've always been working towards mm. was was doing this instrumental music. And even though Emerson Lincoln Palmer did use a lot of lyrics and almost all of their most popular songs were really ballads, like Lucky Man and Still You Turn Me On and From the Beginning, but that was never really the focus of the band. In fact, by the time... Uh, they recorded uh, their immortal album, Brain Salad Surgery, which most people would know now. It does have Still You Turn Me On was it, but most people will know Welcome Back My Friends to the Show That Never Ends. Uh, a lot of that album is, is actually instrumental, but more it was the focus of it. Even the songs that they did put lyrics on, they decided that they were going to make sure that it worked without lyrics first before they added them. And I liked that approach because they had done their previous album trilogy that they, they had a lot of overdubs and they, they realized that well, we can't do this one live. And so let's do something where just the music works and the three of us can play and then we'll add words to it. And I love that ethic and that thought and it's it always comes back down to the music I and mean, music is inherent in in all of us rhythms and, and melodies and harmonies and if you can capture those and make those into stories yeah that that really really is something that i know i've said this before but it really stands up to repeated listenings so well and that's something that I, I want to achieve. And I, I do think about that as I'm, mainly as I'm arranging and mixing. Yes, and and I completely agree. I, I love kind of listening to the progression that you've made with your multiple albums and singles and EPs and things like that. Now with this album, are you looking at doing a a launch? Are you looking at kind of doing a party? Or are you gonna release it to the world and go with the flow uh, I'm I'm starting to do some promotion which I hadn't done before and uh, I'm really going to concentrate on online mm-hmm. like now I've I've just dipped my feet into uh, doing Facebook ads mm. because it's just, it's so hard to, to stand out but that's that's a way because I just want to get it in front of people and say here it is mm-hmm. <laughs> listen and uh because you know I, I i don't have a band i don't tour i have to use what is available and so i'm, I'm really working on it and uh, I've, I've been doing a lot of research on what works and what doesn't because on the one hand it's it's great to have all the connections you can make on the internet on the other hand there are so many scams and there's so much wasted time I've been working to find things that get this in front of people who would be really interested. I don't want to say this kind of music because <laughs> there's no category for, for what I do, but I want to get it in front of people who are real music fans because I think there's the people who would just appreciate it. If it, you know, if you're just a casual music listener, that's great. You, know, you listen in your car, whatever comes on the radio. And I think that my music, and this is something that my my friend Mike, who plays guitar with me, has said, is that 
he said that there's something compelling about what I do. <laughs> mm. And I never thought of that before. He said, you hear, if you're in a different room and you hear it, you're going to stop what you're doing and go in and listen to it. And I think that's what I, I try to achieve, to not hook someone with just a, a catchy melody or just a, a vocal hook in a chorus, but an overall sound that people have never heard before. And they don't say, oh, that was strange. They say, hey, what was that? I want to hear more of that. That's what I'm after. And that kind of thing is, is very difficult to market because you, you can't just say, you're, you're in a Facebook ad, here's a five minute instrumental piece. <laughs> <laughs> And you would be rewarded if you did that, but especially these days, how do you capture someone's attention? Just I, and I try to do like do shorter videos with like a minute or a minute and a half, just to get people interested. Mm -hmm. And even that's even that's not quite enough. You really need to appreciate it to listen to one piece all the way through. That's the downside of doing the, those types of stories and doing those interesting and varied arrangements is that once you listen to it, then you want to listen to it again. Mm -hmm. But how do you get people to listen to it in the first place? That's the trick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Very true. The uh, Yeah, <laughs> that question has been around since the dawn of time. I think uh, Plato probably had that problem and Aristotle and Charles Dickens and Edgar Allan Poe and so on and so on. So <laughs> it's it's not anything new, um, and I I don't think there is a, a magic button or a magic way to get people to pay attention to what you're doing, whether that's podcasting or music or acting or whatnot. Um, but I will say this, Rob, you definitely have enough of a compelling compelling story that people will definitely listen and will definitely appreciate what you've done and what you are doing. I am oh, one of the many people that's very excited for this EP to come out, um, and I can't wait to share your your single off this album with people after our interview here. Hats off to you for taking the plunge into the world of the internet. I think one thing that people forget is things are so accessible now to the independent artist that you don't need a contract with people. You can do it on your own and see what sticks and see what works and, and keep working that way. Um, I think that's something that I've definitely seen a change in the last 10 years. I know I've spoken about it before. I know we've spoken about it as well. But it is a huge undertaking to try to do. So hats off to you for jumping off the bridge and seeing what works and making it work. That's very cool. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of it's it's a lot of work, and it takes you away from writing. But it's the natural progression for what you do. Whatever kind of um, art you do, uh, you want to get it in front of people. Oh, that reminds me, I did something else with this album that I've never done before is that I actually paid for artwork for the mm. cover art mm -hmm. and I found this on Instagram of all places and um, the person is MP Rose like Mary Peter Rose underscore oh goodness I forgot no MP Rose underscore paints I've been struggling to find trying to put together some cover art for this. It was difficult because there was already a book out and it was a hugely popular book. So there are a number of different editions like here and in England. And so all of the elements that you would think of like the, the mountain of Sri Kanda or the, the palace at Yakagala or the tower of Kalidasa, those that are already appeared on book covers. So I, I thought, oh man, what am I gonna do? And then I just happened across this painting on Instagram and instantly I said, that's it. That is the cover and that captures it. And there's something so striking and so daring about it 
and yet there is something, uh, there is this undercurrent that was fluid and flowing, and I thought, oh, this is perfect, because not only did it, it capture a mood, an emotion for me, but it was, I also thought, this would be great to make, make it more intangible for listeners. Don't just say, oh, look, here's an image of this structure or this event in the book. It's about storytelling that you can incorporate into your own life. And I did that with the painting, and that's what I hope people do with the album, too. Fabulous. I was actually going to ask you about the album artwork, because I know in the past you've created your own and done that, and I, I was going to ask, have you gotten into painting now? That's fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll leave that to uh, other other people whose talents are in, in that direction. <laughs> but I took the, for the first single, the Sunrise Over Sri Kanda, I used one section of that painting. And then for the, the next single, I used a, a star glider. I used another section of that painting. But now when the album comes out on February 23rd, then you'll see the whole of the, whole of the artwork as I originally saw it. Mm-hmm. And it's really striking. Perfect. Perfect. Well, now I have to wait. And that's okay. That's okay. I'm waiting with the much anticipation. You won't have to wait long. I'm <laughs> really excited to start posting about the album. And I love that there are six individual stories, but then there's one overall story. Mm-hmm. And I hope everyone thinks that each one is its own adventure. Yes, I'm sure they will, Rob. I'm sure they will. Rob Nelson of Laga Songs, uh, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to talk with me in the wider world about your new album that's coming out. Uh, Like I said, you've dropped a couple singles already. You're kind of hinting the album. It comes out later this February. Uh, Rob, thank you so much. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. Well, thank you so much, Crystal, always, and thank everyone for listening. All right. Fabulous. Have a wonderful rest of the day. Thank you, Crystal. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Bye.